for 12 nothing in the final. Division three action, the Milton Redmen found big problems with Berlin and receiver Matt Hess in the last minute of the first half. A great catch in the end zone put the home team up 7 nothing, and Milton looked like it needed a kickstart. That's what Mike Haskey provided. He stepped in front of Hess on the out pattern and put the Redmen on the board. Just a few minutes later, another interception and sweet throwing Todd Terrell lost it to Jason Dorsteno to lift Milton to a 12-7 win and a Camp Randall title game Thursday at 3. In Division 5, Darlington trailed Hilbert 12-0. Farm Club. And tomorrow afternoon, three bells of Milton Redman and the Mosney Indians for the Division 3 title. Milton came back with an 11-1 record after a couple of off-seasons. They're not faked out anymore, the coach tells, of when the team turned that corner. Our kids uh, came off of the victory against uh, Janesville Craig of the Big Eight, and then we came back and knocked off Burlington, which is one of the powerhouses in our Southern Lakes division. And it gave our kids quite a bit of a momentum, and uh, uh, we knew that we had some very, very fine skilled athletes. One of those talented athletes is Mike Haskey. Haskey came up with a big turnover in the semifinal game on Saturday. I don't know, I just played the cushion, and whenever the, or when the quarterback threw it, I just reacted, and I was there and caught it, put it in the end zone. I, I really, personally, I didn't think we'd be there. I didn't think we could do it. But as a team, we just came together and decided to play. Wanted to play state championship. I don't know. If that corner's that deep ball, simply do a square on it. You don't, you just knock the ball. Uh, I told our Stay players at the beginning of the season, the first day of practice, that if they could understand some of the concepts that we were trying to get across, that we might possibly be a pretty good football team. Okay, in hockey, the Madison... CYA state football playoffs begin tomorrow at Camp Randall Stadium. The first game will have Elk Mound against Hilbert at 11 in the morning. Then at 3, the Milton Redmen play Mosinee in the Division Three championship game. Now, Milton won that title just three years ago, so the Redmen are hoping to keep the tradition of Milton football alive. One of the things we see about ourselves is our offense is very explosive. Uh, we cause a lot of problems on defense, and our kids always think they're going to score and we'll score more points than the opponent. So philosophical, I think, psychological, we get quite an edge on some teams because of that. The third game of the day will be played tomorrow night at 7 when D.C. Everest faces Waukesha South in the Division I championship game. Hockey, just three years ago, Milton was celebrating a state football championship. And tonight it's a hot time in the town again as the Redmen won the Division Three title again today. The final was 32-15 to over Mosinee. Quarterback Todd Terrell and running back Nick Saxon stole the show today in a steady rain. They hooked up on this nine-yard score to give Milton the early lead, 8-0. But Mosinee went to the air to stay close in the first half. Big crowd for Milton today. Tad Steffen with a little swing pass to Jake Wheelock. The 45-yard score made it 14-6 Milton at halftime. But then it was time for the Redmen to turn it to showtime again. And the star of the show is Nick S. Saxon. All he did was rush for 225 yards and score four touchdowns. As for the other touchdown, we go back to quarterback Todd Terrell. He'll fire a beauty to Scott Richardson as Milton wins the Division III championship 32-15. to 15. It's much better playing in the state tournament than watching it. I, I can't believe it. Like I said, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. It's, I don't believe it. I'm going to remember it for the rest of my life. It's great. There you see it again. Milton, 32, Mosinee, 15. Now tonight, the Division I championship, Schofield, D.C. Everest against Waukesha South. We pick it up in the second quarter. Shannon Merkel will walk in. Milton can get you so many ways. You on the air and the ground. Boy, I felt sorry for Mosinee's defense. Mm. Coming in, Milton had a high-powered offense, and it was that plus their ability to hit the big play that paved the way to yet another state championship. Kyle McKinnon has more on their win over Mosinee. The whole Camp Randall house knew Milton was going to rely on quarterback Todd Terrell and a stable of top-ranked receivers, but Mosinee just couldn't do much about it. Drive number one relied on tight end Scott Richardson as the Redmen went 94 yards, but it took a great catch by J.D. Godini on fourth and six to keep it alive. Terrell later red blitz at the one-yard line, lofting it up for Nick Isaacson, Milton up, 8-0. I was hoping we could come on and do just about anything we could, and that's what happened. Uh, with a great offensive line, I think a team can do about anything. Isaacson is not in the backfield to catch passes, though. He's there to run, either through the gaping holes his offensive line created or around and through the defensive backs he ran into. They was just there all day. The holes were humongous, and I have a great blocking back, and the holes are just there. Milton led just 14-9 at the half, but as the rain poured down late, the Redmen dominated. They learned to play in rain back in September. Their only loss of the season at Lake Geneva, this time 
The rain had no effect at all. I'm just really happy. I'm, I never dreamed that we'd win a state championship my senior year. I was just, I'm just overwhelmed. A second state title trophy for Milton. The last one came in 1986. The final score tonight, 32-15. Kyle McKinnon, WISC News 3 Sports, Camp Randall. Early in the day, it was a battle of unbeatens. For Heads for Madison. And it's Milton and Mosin for the state football championship. Jay has highlights when we come back. fan to sit out there in this right now to watch again. Yeah. Well, Milton had the short end of the stick because they got to sit on the side of Camp Randall that didn't have the overhang. Oh. <laughs> but they won anyway, so. Well, all right. So it worked out just fine. It's one of those years where there are very few Madison area teams in the state football finals. In fact, the only team left from these parts is Milton. And today, the Redmen met Mosinee for the WIA Division III state championship. Now, Milton figured its offense could move the ball, and boy, did it. Todd Terrell to Nick Isaacson. It took an early 8-0 lead. And remember that name, Nick Isaacson. We'll be seeing him a little later. Mosinee, though, made it close just before the half. This is Tad Steffen with a little swing pass to Jake Wheelock. And he'll go all the way for another and kick three field goals. He had to get through the third quarter, I think, basically. I mean, they surely scored a touchdown at the end of the third quarter, but they ran off a lot of the clock. And I think that was the key part that our defense held them that long. Sure, they did score, but we did hold them for quite a long time. Another tough decision. Janice, the envelope, please. Thank you. The winner is the Milton football team. Thursday, the Redmen won their first state title since 1986. Three years ago, most of the guys on this team were freshmen watching Mike Saunders and company roll to victory. Now these Redmen have made a little history of their own. Well, when we were freshmen, it was just like a dream to do something like this. and It just came true. We, Everything just seemed like the state year. It's much better playing in the state tournament than watching it. I, I can't believe it. Like I said, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. It's, I don't believe it. I can remember it for the rest of my life. Way to go, guys. The Madison Fire with three games at Camp Randall. The Milton Redmond have returned to the big dance since winning a title back in 86. Milton compiled an 11-1 record after being faked out the past couple years in the Southern Lakes. Milton's head coach could see the turning point of this season. Our kids uh, came off with a victory against uh, Janesville Craig in the Big Eight, and then we came back and knocked off Burlington, which is one of the powerhouses in our Southern Lakes division. And it gave our kids quite a bit of a momentum, and uh, uh, we knew that we had some very, very fine skilled athletes. One of those skilled athletes is Mike Haskey, who turned Saturday's playoff game around with this one big play. I don't know, I just played the cushion and whenever the, or when the quarterback threw it, I just reacted and I was there and caught it, put it in the end zone. I, I really, personally, I didn't think we'd be there. I didn't think we could do it. But as a team, we just came together and decided to play, wanted to play state championship. I don't know, if that corner's that deep off, simply do a square on it. You know, it's not uh, I told our players at the beginning of the season, the first day of practice, that if they could understand some of the concepts that we were trying to get across, that we might possibly be a pretty good football team. Milton will face Mosinee tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Both teams go into the title match with identical 11-1 records. Mosinee has won two state titles in the 80s, so they're a pretty good club as well. It was not close. Jerome Walton runs away with Rookie of the Year honors. The Cubs center fielder got... Well, afternoon at 3, and as Paul Johnson reports, Milton is no stranger to football success. The town of Milton is rich with football tradition. In 1979, Milton College produced Seattle Seahawks quarterback Dave Craig. In 1986, Milton High School produced Iowa running back Mike Saunders and a state championship team. Now the 89 Redmen want to make a little history of their own. You know, it's just been a dream for a long time. You know, the 86 team kind of planned to see it. You know, we've been going on that ever since. Oh, 23! Head to me! Just uh, take part of that. Brought the math and I mean, it's great. Blue 11! Blue 11! My uh, brother JJ, he went in 86 as a junior and started his defensive end, and I'm kind of the second member of my family to go to state, and it's kind of a great honor. Two, nine! Hot, hot. This season, Milton is 11 and 1, but the road to state was a little rough. Last year, the Redmen were 3-6, and six, their first losing season since coming to the Southern Lakes Conference in 1982. The Redmen decided if they were going to have any success this season, 
it was going to have to start in the off season. They were tremendous off season workers. Uh, I'm talking not so much about the football skills, working on the strength uh, in the weight room. Guys paid money to go to camp, and uh, we spent our whole summer in the weight room doing things most other kids in Wisconsin. You know, they were about to the beach, but we were in the weight room sweating it out. We just kept working for higher goals all year, and family concept, like everyone says, you know, uh, someone gets down, the whole team's there to help them up. And it's strong families that get through the toughest of times. The Redmen hope the hard work pays off with another state title. In Milton, Paul Johnson, 27 Eyewitness News, at 6. The game for our area is at 3 p.m. between Milton and Mosinee. The Redmen feature quite a defense and one of the best passing combinations in the state. Kyle McKinnon has our story. There are a few small school football teams that have ever been able to do what this team does. Here's a quarterback, for example, that actually reads defenses, actually changes calls at the line. He throws spirals to receivers who actually catch the ball. Here's a Division III team with enough depth to use just two players on both the offense and defense. Todd Terrell is the man high on opponents' scouting reports. J.D. Godini is right there, too, number 83 right there under you, two pretty fine athletes to watch for tomorrow. I get really down when I don't complete them because I know I'm capable of completing a lot. J.D. Godini, he's the greatest receiver I've ever seen. I mean, he's got routes, you know, that only I know and that he knows. I mean, we've worked for seven years. And Godini worked with Steve Largent for one week. That's Largent as in Seattle Seahawks future Hall of Famer. Average speed, great hands. Catches passes from Dave Craig, the ex-QB of Milton's ex-college, where J.D.'s dad, Rudy Godini, was coach. We had a free week in June and got to work out with uh, those guys, and it was a great time in my life, and I really enjoyed myself out there, and it helped me a lot this fall, being very successful. Of course, there are other wide receivers in this offense. There are some pretty good running backs to balance it out, and there's a fine defensive line and defensive backfield. Makes sense for a state division three finalist, although few expected it back in August. Uh, we have some great skill kids and our offensive linemen and defensive linemen really developed and I'll tell you, from that aspect, uh, that was a big surprise. Schlem led a contender to Camp Randall three years back and behind some great skill players won the state title. They each entered the division three title game with 11 and one records. The similarities end there. Milton dominated with Nick Isaacson on the ground and Todd Terrell through the air. The combination clicked for a 96-yard drive in the first quarter. Isaacson finally scoring from eight yards out on the pass. Two-point conversion failed, 8-0 Redmond. Mosini relied on the big play offense, and late in the second quarter, it worked. Jake Wheelock taking the screen pass on the near side and a solid block, turning it into a 55-yard scoring play. It was 14-9 Milton at the half. The rain and snow, as well as Isaacson and Terrell, did end Mosini in the second half. Isaacson had 170 yards rushing before the fourth quarter began. When Terrell, on a fourth and 22, stepped up and hit Scott Richardson in the end zone, this game was all but over. Nick Isaacson and Todd Terrell combined to light up the Mosini defense and in the process secure a state championship for the Redmen of Milton. 32-15, the final score. Nick was fine on the hole, and the, the offensive line did a super, super job for him. I think if you see Nick, he'd tell you that. But he made some great runs, but his legs never stopped. So uh, our offense kind of lends to a lot of things for him. So we're very, very happy with that football team. It's just great. I mean, it hasn't hit me yet that we actually did do it. But sooner or later, I just I can't believe it. I mean, oh, it's, it's the greatest. Yeah, we both had a good day. They were a good team, though. I mean, it was just seemed like everything worked today. Milton wins their second state title. The other was in 1986. Mike Heller, New Scene, 15 Sports. Okay, let's run down those scores now. Isaacson with 225 yards in Division 5. The Wolves climbing over Elk Mound. And now in Division 1 tonight at Camp Randall, D.C. Everest. Against... Nick Isaacson, he took an early 8-0 lead. And remember that name, Nick Isaacson. We'll be seeing him a little later. Mosinee, though, made it close just before the half. This is Tad Steppen with a little swing pass to Jake Wheelock. And he'll go all the way 45 yards. It's 14-6, Milton at half. But on the sixth play of the second half, Nick Isaacson, 29-yard run. Isaacson today scored four touchdowns, 37 rushes, 225 yards. And an even bigger play here, fourth and 23. Milton goes to the air again. Todd Terrell to Scott Richardson. Milton wins 32-15. This feels like... 
<laughs> when we were freshmen, it was just like a dream to do something like this. And it just came true. We, everything just seemed like the state year. Well, they did it. I, I recognize that Todd and Nick are, you know, they're two teammates that have worked for four years. And they better get their butts in gear and get something done because that's the game of the game is to, is to control the line of scrimmage. And they did a super job with it. Indeed, Milton wins its second state title in four years, 32. Was that offensive line? You just watch these the line. Battle of the trenches, just just like a these coach, guys John. did a super yeah. job. Yeah, they really did. Milton's high-powered offense was just too much for Mosadi's defense. As a result, the Redmen stormed to their second state title in four years. Kyle McKinnon is more on their victory. The whole Camp Randall House knew Milton was going to rely on quarterback Todd Terrell and a stable of top-ranked receivers, but Mosadi just couldn't do much about it. Drive number one relied on tight end Scott Richardson as the Redmen went 94 yards, but it took a great catch by J.D. Godini on fourth and six to keep it alive. Terrell later red blitz at the one yard line, lofting it up for Nick Isaacson, Milton up, eight nothing. I was hoping we could come on and do just about anything we could. And that's what happened. Uh, with a great offensive line, I think a team could do about anything. Isaacson is not in the backfield to catch passes though. He's there to run either through the gaping holes his offensive line created or around and through the defensive backs he ran into. The holes were humongous and I have a great blocking back. and. The holes are just there. Milton led just 14-9 at the half, but as the rain poured down late, the Redmen dominated. I'm just really happy. Um, I never dreamed that we'd win a state championship my senior year. I was just, I'm just overwhelmed. The final score tonight, 32-15. Kyle McKinnon, WISC News 3 Sports, Camp Randall. Earlier in the day, it was a battle of unbeatens for the Division 5 title. Hilbert against Elk Mound. The Nick uh, Isaacson scored a four touchdown to help his team defeat Mosinee 32 to 15. Isaacson carried the ball 37 times for 225 yards. The Redmen finished the season at 12 and 1. It's just a dream come true. We've been working in the weight room for the whole, the whole last year and years since a freshman, and it's just a dream come true. And the final score there was Milton 32, Mosinee 15. Same accolade. Good luck, Milton Redmond. Good luck. All the way to the top, Redmond. Go, go, go. And go, Redmond, go. As on this quick trip store in downtown Milton. Like, do it again, Redmond. Ring throughout the city. As a store just across the street, Zitko Station. Bruce's relatives. Go, Redmond. Good luck at state. All these words, everywhere you go throughout the city of Milton, mean the same. Whether it's in the downtown district, or throughout the front yards of Milton, it's all the same. Good luck, Redmond, all the way to state. School's parking lot, and its interior is quiet now. It'll rear up with cheer and amazement. As school is dismissed at 12 noon, and the Milton students go to the long trek of Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. Oh, Division three state championship. And with a taped placard on, front of the, on the front of the marquee saying, good luck Redmond, number one. This sign in front of the high school, Rock on Redmond. With that at the individual players for the Redmond. Always relatively quiet now in Milton High School. They'll up with cheer and laughter later as class is dismissed at noon and the students take the long trek to Camp Randall Stadium, Madison. Signs riddle the hallways of Milton with different streamers and colors of red and white. Always are quiet, the classrooms are full of action and flurry. Even with the help of the cheerleaders, little locker placards like this one. Only first hour at Milton High School. This is what the hall classways could look like come noontime when all of Milton will be at Camp Randall Stadium. I mean, I'm better turn this way. I'll just, if you want, Coach, if you want to say, you've been brought home to the media by a lot of stations this year. Um, they've all asked you what you thought about today's game, offense, defense, but. Let's do something a little bit different. I want to put something on tape that's going to say to the guys, hey, although if you win or lose, you know, 
either way, take either aspect of it. If you lose, maybe some reflections on the season. If you win, even reflections on the season, maybe a little praise too. However you want to look at it. Well, Pete, uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, for being our, our video cameraman here for the last uh, five, six years. It's been a very appreciative thing, so I want to, I want to get that point in. Secondly, uh, I've never been much of a, of a coach that dealt with the negative aspects of, of football. I've always used anything that we've done as a learning prospect for the, for the young men that I've coached, and, and that's extremely important to me as, as a person. Uh, the rewards of coaching, uh, Pete, Ourself, um, I'm not in this profession uh, to gain notoriety. Uh, that comes by itself simply because you're 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 in the media eyes when you are a coach. More important is that you see success with your players. That's the most important thing that I think I can give to a player as a coach. It's not wins and losses. If I were in this game and I were to continue to lose, uh, personally, I think I would not continue to be a coach because I think then it needs new direction and new leadership and recognize that in high school athletics, uh, one must recognize again that we don't, we're not always blessed every year with talented kids. And if you're not blessed with talented kids, you cannot win constantly. I've been blessed with that. And I've been blessed with a pretty good coaching staff. So as we enter this 1989 football season, and in the, when we entered it, I just simply told our players I wanted to be a team, I wanted to be a family, and that if those ties were strong enough, that we might be able to win some games if we totally understood the concept of what we were trying to do as that family. And then as you, as you proceed into the season and we found out that we, we were doing quite well as a family, we now are fortunate enough to stay healthy and be into the state championship final. And as I proceed into the state championship, I just want to leave this with the players. Uh, they have worked extremely hard with that family tie. Uh, the success on on this day, uh, on November 10th, 1989, I, I hope we'll be remembered by them as being a positive one, a win or lose. Uh, our aspiration has been to win the state championship uh, ever since we defeated Berlin uh, last Friday. And I think that reward will come uh, regardless of what happens, win or lose. And uh, it's been a great season. Uh, it's been a, uh, an emotional one for me. Uh, ups and downs, uh, and uh, certainly we want to end this game with probably the word enthusiasm because that's something I've stressed to the players all year long, that to be enthusiastic rather than be emotional because emotions do have ups and downs, and that's kind of what has caught me at times. And when I end this last game uh, for the state championship, I'll be enthusiastic and will show very little emotions because uh, I have to keep myself geared into the the coaching end of it and not let the emotions play a part of what I'm going to do because then if I do that it will reflect upon the players but uh, again I want to thank this community and the, and the fans and uh, the coaching staff <laughs>
Pittsburgh.
Thank you all for supporting us because it's, it's all going back into the football team and go get them guys. Wow. 